Back in the Old Testament, we spent a good while looking at the dream that Daniel interpreted for Nebuchadnezzar, where he envisioned a figure whose head was made of gold, whose arms and chest were of silver, whose belly and thighs were bronze, and whose legs were iron mixed with clay at the feet. These represented the four great earthly kingdoms that were to come, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. We'll do a quick recap here. In your vision, your majesty, you saw standing before you a huge shining statue of a man. It was a frightening sight. The head of the statue was made of fine gold. Its chest and arms were silver. Its belly and thighs were bronze. Its legs were iron, and its feet were a combination of iron and baked clay. As you watched, a rock was cut from a mountain, but not by human hands. It struck the feet of the iron and clay, smashing them to bits. The whole statue was crushed into small pieces of iron, clay, bronze, silver and gold. Then the wind blew them away without a trace like chaff on a threshing floor. But the rock that knocked the statue down became a great mountain that covered the whole earth. Daniel goes on to interpret this vision. After your kingdom comes to an end, another kingdom inferior to yours will rise to take your place. After that kingdom has fallen, yet a third kingdom, represented by bronze, will rise to rule the world. Following that kingdom, there will be a fourth one, as strong as iron. That kingdom will smash and crush all previous empires, just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. The feet and toes you saw were a combination of iron and baked clay, showing that this kingdom will be divided. Like iron mixed with clay, it will have some of the strength of iron, but while some parts of it will be as strong as iron, other parts will be as weak as clay. This mixture of iron and clay also shows that these kingdoms will try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances with each other through intermarriage, but they will not hold together, just as iron and clay do not mix. During the reigns of those kings, the God of Heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness and it will stand forever. That is the meaning of the rock cut from the mountain, though not by human hands, that crushed to pieces the statue of iron, bronze, clay, silver and gold. The great God was showing the king what will happen in the future. The dream is true and its meaning is certain. The important thing to note here is that the fourth and final empire in Daniel 2 refers to both a historic Rome and an end-time world empire or government. How do we know this? Well, in Daniel 2.34 we read that, God will take a rock and strike the statue at the feet. When he does this, it will completely destroy the whole statue. This refers to the second coming of Christ, where Jesus, the stone from the mountain of God, crushes not only the final empire, but also all trace of the previous world empires. This whole mystery system stemming from Babylon will be completely destroyed and blown away like chaff in the wind. When Christ destroys all trace of these old kingdoms, he will then establish his own eternal kingdom that will cover the whole earth. Now if the statue is struck on the feet, meaning the Roman Empire, this means that the Roman Empire will have to exist in some form at the end of the age. This is often referred to as the revived Roman Empire or the revived Holy Roman Empire. This will be the dominant kingdom at the end of time and the system through which the Antichrist will come. Later, in Daniel 7, these same four successive kingdoms of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece and Rome were shown to Daniel in another vision, this time in the shape of animals. There it says, The first beast was like a lion with eagle's wings. That means Babylon. Then I saw a second beast and it looked like a bear. That means Medo-Persia. Then the third of these strange beasts appeared and it looked like a leopard. It had four birds' wings on its back and it had four heads. That means Greece. Then in my vision that night I saw a fourth beast, terrifying, dreadful and very strong. It devoured and crushed its victims with huge iron teeth and trampled their remains beneath its feet. It was different from any of the other beasts and it had ten horns. And that means Rome. Fast forward to the end times and in Revelation 13 we read about a beast rising out of the sea. In biblical prophecy the sea represents the peoples of the earth. So out of the peoples of the earth comes a beast and it is described like this. Then I saw a beast rising up out of the sea. It had seven heads and ten horns with ten crowns in its horns and written on each head were names that blasphemed God. This beast looked like a leopard but it had the feet of a bear and the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave the beast his own power and throne and great authority. Notice that this beast is a mixture of the four animals from Daniel 7. This end times beast therefore represents an amalgamation of the four world empires. Babylon the lion, Medo-Persia the bear, 
Greece the leopard, and then they become one in Rome. The dominant end times kingdom will be an embodiment of all those separate kingdoms in one. Revelation 13 goes on to say that, I saw that one of the heads of the beast seemed wounded beyond recovery, but the fatal wound was healed. The whole world marvelled at this miracle and gave allegiance to the beast. They worshipped the dragon for giving the beast such power, and they also worshipped the beast. Who is as great as the beast, they exclaimed. Who is able to fight against him? So the end time kingdom is going to be unbelievably powerful, and people will think it is far too strong for anyone to fight against or overcome. And that may be true, humanly speaking. However, they haven't reckoned with Jesus who will return this time, not as a lamb to the slaughter, but as the rampaging lion of the tribe of Judah, a warrior with robes dipped in blood. In Revelation 19:11 to 15 we read, Then I saw heaven opened, and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was named Faithful and True, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns. A name was written on him that no one understood except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title was the Word of God. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest of pure white linen, followed him in white horses. From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. The present day European Union is that revived Roman Empire prophesied about in Daniel. The nations are trying to mix together like iron and clay, but it will not hold together and it won't prevail. We'll look more at the EU in the next few parts.